Edward I was born on June 17, 1239, at the Palace of Westminster, London, to King Henry III and Queen Eleanor of Provence. He was the eldest surviving son of the royal couple, and was born during a time of political turmoil in England, with his father facing opposition from barons and other nobles. Edward was given a rigorous education, studying subjects such as history, languages, and military strategy. He was named Edward in honor of Edward, the Confessor. Edward was baptized in the chapel of Westminster Palace shortly after his birth, later, he was also given the name, Longsharks, due to his tall stature, standing over six feet tall, which he inherited from his father. Edward was crowned king on August 19, 1274, at Westminster Abbey, after the death of his father. He was 35 years old at the time of his coronation, and was already an experienced military leader and statesman. He took the oath of allegiance to the church and promised to uphold the laws of the realm, marking the beginning of his reign as King of England. He married Eleanor of Castile in 1254, and they had 16 children together. Edward's marriage to Eleanor was a political alliance aimed at strengthening ties between England and Castile. They had a strong and loving relationship, and their marriage was one of the longest and most successful royal marriages in English history. In 1277, Edward led an army into Wales and defeated the Welsh Prince Llywelyn ap Griffith, bringing Wales under English control. Edward's campaign in Wales was part of his broader efforts to expand and consolidate English power in the British Isles. His victory over Llywelyn ap Griffith was a major turning point in Welsh history, and marked the beginning of English domination over Wales. Edward built castles in Wales such as Kynarvan, Beaumaris, Conwy and Harlech castles which are still standing today. He also strengthened the English Parliament, including the creation of the House of Commons, which represented the common people. Edward believed that the king should be accountable to his subjects, and saw Parliament as a way of representing the interests of the people. He granted more power to the House of Commons, which allowed it to play a greater role in government. In 1290, Edward issued the Edict of Expulsion, which expelled all Jews from England, accusing him of usury and other crimes. The edict was a significant blow to the Jewish community in England, which had been living in the country since the time of the Norman Conquest. It reflected the anti-Semitic attitudes that were prevalent in medieval Europe, and marked the beginning of a period of persecution and discrimination against Jews. In 1291, Edward negotiated a treaty with the Scottish king, John Balliol, recognizing Edward as the overlord of Scotland. The treaty was aimed at resolving a long-standing dispute between England and Scotland over the border between the two countries. It recognized Edward's authority over Scotland, but also allowed for some degree of Scottish autonomy. However, Edward's attempts to control Scotland led to the First War of Scottish Independence, which lasted from 1296 to 1328. The war was sparked by Edward's decision to intervene in Scottish affairs, and his attempts to assert English control over Scotland. It was a bloody and prolonged conflict, marked by battles such as the Battle of Falkirk in 1298, which saw Edward's forces defeat the Scottish army led by William Wallace. In this period Edward was known as the Hammer of the Scots. In 1305, William Wallace was captured by the English and was hung, drawn and quartered in London, his head was put on a spike at London Bridge. Wallace had become a symbol of Scottish resistance to English rule, and his execution further inflamed Scottish resistance. It was also a major propaganda victory for Edward, who sought to portray Wallace as a traitor and himself as the rightful ruler of Scotland. Edward was known for his military campaigns, and he fought in a number of wars during his reign. He led a successful campaign against the French in 1297, and also fought in the Crusades, where he gained a reputation as a skilled military leader. Edward believed that military power was essential to maintaining the security and stability of his kingdom. Edward was also a patron of the arts, and he commissioned a number of significant works of architecture, including the famous Eleanor Crosses, which were erected in memory of his beloved wife Eleanor after her death in 1290. The crosses were ornate stone monuments, which marked the places where her funeral procession had stopped on its journey from Lincolnshire to Westminster Abbey. Edward was a devout Christian, and he made significant donations to the church during his reign. He established a number of religious institutions, including the College of St. Mary in Oxford, and was known for his piety and devotion. Edward was also a keen legislator, and he passed a number of important laws during his reign. These included the Statute of Mortmain, which limited the ability of the church to acquire land, and the Statute of Winchester, which established new procedures for maintaining law and order in the country. Edward saw the law as a key tool for consolidating his power, and he was known for his commitment to justice and fairness. Edward was a strong and charismatic leader, and he was greatly respected by his subjects. 
He was known for his courage, his sense of duty, and his commitment to justice. He was also an effective diplomat, and he maintained strong relationships with other European monarchs, including the kings of France and Spain. Edward faced a number of challenges during his reign, including rebellion from his own barons, who were unhappy with his attempts to centralize power. He also faced opposition from the church, which saw his attempts to limit their power as a threat. However, Edward was able to overcome these challenges through his strength of character and his ability to win over his opponents. Edward's reign was marked by significant political and social changes, including the growth of the English Parliament and the establishment of a more centralized system of government. He also made significant contributions to English law and culture, and his legacy can still be felt in modern-day England. Edward died on July 7, 1307, while on his way to engage in conflict with Robert the Bruce. He was succeeded by his son, Edward II, who proved to be a much weaker and less effective king. Edward's death marked the end of a significant chapter in English history, and his reign is still remembered as a time of great change and transformation. One of Edward's greatest strengths was his determination. He was a man who knew what he wanted, and he was not easily deterred. This determination was evident in his military campaigns, his efforts to centralize power in England, and his attempts to control Scotland. His determination, sense of duty, and commitment to his people made him a beloved and respected ruler, and his legacy continues to be felt in England to this day.